The second win was more dramatic for me than the first one, just because I walked in fearlessly. First win, it's not that I wasn't fearless, but first win, you're working every shot and you're kind of contemplating whether you should do this or not. Should I hit the shot or should I do this? And you're fighting against the other player and match play. You keep working at it, each shot, each shot, and then second one, I walked in with just, you know, sky high confidence, which is an amazing feeling. That'll do it. Winning it again gave me the ultimate amount of confidence saying like, you could do this, you know, and go pro and pull it off and just keep working hard and everything will fall into place. I didn't play for very long. Even at 2010, I only played, I was 17, 18, so I only played for like six years, maybe five years. Winning those two basically steered my career into being where I am here today. So it was, it's the basis of my whole golf life, basically. I like to go back to how I was when I was 2010, 2011, back in those days when there was no worries. You're fearless, and I think that was the key to success. Winning the national championship is quite an accomplishment. The course rotates us every year. It's just um, mentally and physically exhausting. But at the end, it's just, it's the greatest uh, feeling to know that you've accomplished it. Someone says, what's your greatest accomplishment in golf? And I, I really have to say my three US amateurs in a row because you know how difficult match play is anyway. And then uh, to win 18 consecutive matches, it's tough three different golf courses and anything can happen in match play. It just kind of got better each round. And I appreciated winning U.S. Amateur. It's a beautiful trophy and names on that with a lot of great players. But the older you get, which I am older, you appreciate how hard it was and, and what a great milestone it was. Going into the 2014 U.S. Women's Am, that was the first U.S. Women's Am I've ever played in. So I really didn't have that much expectation in at all of winning. I didn't even think that was really possible until I started getting into a few matches. Most of my matches, I think all of them, I was down at one point. A couple matches, I know I went to extra holes. When it comes to match play, I know I have 18 holes to just fight as hard as I can. I mean, after that, everyone like started calling me the fighter because I always was down and just ended up coming back. Me and my dad, before every round, just kept saying, it's just, this is just a bonus round. And then we got to the final round, my dad was like, it's still a bonus round. I was like, nope, it's not a bonus round anymore. Like, <laughs> we're past that now. She now becomes the first to win the women's amateur in her first try in eight years. I don't think I, at that time, really understood what it meant. But once you start getting into all the tournaments, all the majors, the World Am team, start to realize how big of a deal it is. And you have that label with your name for your whole life. When I got to 2018, I won a JLPJ event a couple weeks before, and so I definitely had the confidence that I needed to have in going into it. I think I was the only previous winner in the field, and so I felt like more eyes were on me versus the first one, like no eyes were on me at all. I wasn't supposed to win that one, but the one in 2018, I was definitely one of the favorites to win. You just can't get too far ahead of yourself. You have to make sure you keep playing the same game plan you have and not trying to play not to lose versus trying to play to win. And the summer of Kristen Gilman continues, and now she adds her name to a very short list of multiple winners of the amateur. Once I won, I think there's just so much emotion just because I knew that I accomplished everything in amateur golf that I really wanted to. I think after winning it the second time, it was more like, oh, the first one wasn't just a fluke. Like, I'm definitely good enough to be able to compete in these things. It's crazy to see all the names are on the trophy and that your name's up there with some of the best players, and I'll always be there. And so it's pretty cool to see that. And it still is <laughs> crazy to me to think that I still won two USAM just because it's the biggest tournament, I think, in amateur golf. And so it definitely is a huge accomplishment. always loved to play match play. I've always loved just kind of that feisty nature. The golf course set up fabulously for me. It gave me the opportunity to play aggressively, which I liked, and I was pretty darn confident. <laughs> I, I mean, I just, I knew where the ball was going. I, 
cut it incredibly well. And confidence in match play is tough. Uh, you know, it's tough to play against a confident player in match play who knows when they're going to make the pots and, and knows what's going to happen. And that's how I felt like I really approached the week. When you play golf a long time, especially at the professional level, you have your ups and your downs. When I'm having tough moments on the golf course, it's sometimes good to remember that you got nothing to lose. Because I had nothing to lose. I really didn't. And go out there and, and be that cocky 17-year-old, that confident player that I was as an amateur. So sometimes it's always good to think back and remind yourself of what you're capable of. Morgan Pressel is the winner of the 105th United States Women's Amateur, and she does so in impressive style. I'm a fan of the history of the game, and to think that my name is etched on that trophy forever with truly the greatest players to ever play the game, Julie Inkster three times, <laughs> you know, that's, that's pretty incredible. And to finally hold that trophy was very, very special. No matter what else I'm able to do in golf, I think it's a major championship. And I still say that was the best seven, eight, nine days of golf that I've probably ever played in my whole career. During the morning 18, Kelly made shots like this at the seventh to lead one up. 1995, um, my first US amateur victory in Brookline at the Country Club. I remember the course playing really, really long, but the course, it fit my eye and it's like, there wasn't a hole or a shot that I ever had any qualms about. And she's taking it right at the hole. About this play, Roger. Right of the flag, it's a dandy shot, but she's really applied a lot of pressure with that. My goodness, I'm surprised. That was, um, it was incredible. I had a great rapport with my caddy, and I was playing excellent golf, and I, I came out on top that week. This women's amateur championship wins the 95th. Firethorn, it was a Pete Dye course. Felt really, really comfortable playing the railroad ties, dog legs. Um, that's what I grew up on. I remember Marissa Baena. I competed with her against her when I was at Texas. She was playing at Arizona. When I had the chance to play her one-on-one -on -one in the finals, I was really motivated because U of A beat Texas by one shot that year in the national championship. So Kelly Keeney with the birdie on seven, the 25th hole, <laughs> celebrates. Oh, what a player. My mama gave me specific instructions. She said that trophy needs to go back on that table. And I'm like, yes, ma'am, okay. I mean, that was literally, that was my motivation. And that trophy is gonna look awesome back in my house. I didn't feel like I got to see it enough. I've been able to maintain that level of play for that long and knowing that I was the one everyone was chasing. It gave me the opportunity to prove myself and I was able to stand up to that. Winning back-to-back -back U.S. Amateurs is my crowning achievement.